lions are feasting. They are still fighting with one another, particularly the little cubs. There's lots of moaning and carrying on and growling and hissing and biting and throwing of claws around. So it's still not very polite around the dinner table. The adults are far better. All the females tend to be a lot more relaxed and they're just winding down this hot day. And you can see the female on the right there. She's breathing quite heavily, just getting rid of all that sort of excess heat as well as just trying to help with the digestion and get that tummy down. And there we go, listen to the little ones. It's amazing, I love the sound that they make. Something about lions around a carcass is just absolutely incredible. The noises are just out of this world. The sound seems to kind of cut through you and it's almost very, very, very intimidating. It's nice just to sit and actually listen to these sounds. It's one of those things that you know you don't hear that often so sometimes just to sit and listen and it's also the best time of day for these sounds because we're now in that sort of dawn period i mean dusk period where the sun has gone down all the daylight animals are just starting to get sort of comfortable and rest and the nocturnals haven't quite woken up yet so it's quite a sort of serene time of the day not too much noise and all of a sudden you get this sort of outbreaks of aggression between the cubs and lots of noise it's quite amazing it's sort of more amplified because of the quietness around us and you can see a bit of bonding and a bit of grooming that's all very very important when you've been feeding off a carcass there's a lot of blood and guts that's all over them and they need to unfortunately get rid of that to keep their fur in good condition so you'll find that they'll groom each other and it's also just a part of keeping a sort of contact between them constant and so that they know who one another is if there's any sort of separation of the pride so yes, the female was dragging the carcass a little bit and that's why they had a little meltdown so the little cubs weren't in, too impressed with that absolutely incredible Can you listen to that so this little one that's being bitten by What's Steph, you're wondering if the Birminghams would try to kill these cubs or if they're too big. Well, the Birminghams wouldn't try to kill these cubs because they are the Birmingham's cubs. The Birminghams have been around these cubs for many months and have been seen with them multiple times. So the Birminghams would not kill these cubs at all. But if hypothetically we got a different coalition of lions that came into this area, so something like, let's say, the Majingalans or the Matimbas, and they moved around here, then you would find, yes, they would try to kill these cubs. These cubs are definitely not big enough to defend themselves. They're not big enough to be mated with. And so those males will kill them to bring the females back into their Easter cycles. It's only when a cub sort of reaches about two and a half to three years old that it starts to become somewhat safe from newer males. But even then, sometimes they get killed. It's generally when they reach three and a half to four that they're completely safe. she beautiful they're in such good condition at the moment and after a meal like this they just look so much better really really good to see and the little cubs you can see their mange is still a little bit on their elbows but it has gone away they look a lot better unfortunately they're at that age where cubs look a little bit raggedy they tend to go a bit skinny at this age and they kind of the paws and the ears are still a little bit big and they look a bit funny they unfortunately haven't filled out quite as much as they will so once they reach about sort of two years or a year and a half they start to get a lot more bulky and they look a lot better and it's always a sort of awkward phase of their life but you can see they've all come together now now that it's dark they're not lying far apart they're all nicely come together Beth, you're saying, do the lionesses share all this meat or does the dominant lioness just feed and get the best parts? Well, they all share, but reluctantly. So there's quite a bit of competition, as you can see, around the carcass. So even amongst the cubs, they try and fight for the best parts. And there's no real dominant female. There are older females, and they'll try to get in there. But the younger females will also try to get in there as well. And there'll be fights that will break out. And it's not just because of who you are means where you get a place on the carcass. Everybody fights for their sort of 
portion and for their section to be able to feed. So it's quite something around a lion carcass. There's no sort of dominance. The only ones that are able to bully and throw their weight around are the dominant males. So if the Birmingham boys came in here, they would rush in, chase all of these off and start to feed on their own. They wouldn't really allow too much um, sort of competition from the, the females and the cubs. <laughs> but when it comes to the females, they will fight one another for that sort of place on the carcass. And generally the bigger, stronger female, she ends up getting the best cuts because she's able to dominate physically. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the sort of leader of the of the group. I've seen females that are the old females that have sort of led the pride for many years that as they get older they almost recess slightly and they end up being the ones that get all the sort of scraps rather than the actual choice bits. So it just changes and flows of whoever's in the best physical condition at the time. But you can see now that how there's not too much meat actually left and so what they're trying to do is now is actually lick quite a bit so they go along the bones and they use that rough tongue that is really good for grooming to start licking and they'll lick all the little pieces of meat off those bones and try and clean them as much as possible and by this time tomorrow I'm sure these lions will have abandoned this carcass and the vultures would have been in and there will be absolutely nothing left there will just be scraps and a few little bits of bone here and there and if the hyenas get in here then there will be really nothing you can see the one female is actually taking a nap on her carcass now which is <laughs> A little bit macabre, I would say. So there she is, she's lying on the back end of the carcass. It can't be the best place to sleep. The whole carcass is moving, the cubs are making a noise. So not the best place, I don't think. It is getting quite dark, so we might go into our infrared mode just now so that we can just see how it looks. There we go, you can see that's what it looks like in infrared. Like I said, it is getting a little bit dark, so it's a little bit better when we've got the infrared on. So much cleaner picture. And also, like I say, we're not affecting the lines in any way by shining lights at them, so it just seems to be a lot more ethically correct to do it this way. Isn't that amazing? It just astounds me the technology that we have in modern day times that we're able to do these kind of things. Kenneth, you're wondering if the lionesses would defer the kill to a young male lion. Well, if the young male lion was big enough, possibly, but I can tell you now, any young male lion that thinks about trying to come after these Inkahumas, it's better think again, because these five lionesses are big, and they will give a young male lion a serious hiding. And the thing is, is it's not so much about the carcass, it's more about the cubs. They are going to try and protect their cubs as much as possible, and try and kind of keep them safe. So if a young male lion came here, there would be lot of trauma. Now I'm just going to try and just reposition slightly just so we can see a little bit better and try and just get our way that we have a little bit clearer view of all of the cubs lying around the carcass as well as some of the adult females that are lying here. So there we go, that's a little bit better. Isn't that amazing? It's like a carpet of lions around this carcass.